It's Star Wars Podcast Week, and we're here to talk about all things Star Wars. We are celebrating Star Wars Podcast Day and uh, uh, on today, and so we've got an interesting what if kind of situation going on. So, welcome to Two Geeks and a Microphone. Welcome to the Two Geeks in a Microphone podcast, your one-stop shop for television, movie, video games, comic books, book reviews, and more. Now, without further ado, here's Steven and Mike. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Two Geeks and a Microphone. I am your co-host, Mr. Stephen Boster, along with the one, the only, who's not drinking coffee today, Mr. Michael Shanks. Mike, say hey to everybody. Good morning to all you geeks out there in geekdom land. <clears throat> no, I'm You're not right. drinking coffee, but uh, probably drinking what I shouldn't be drinking, Diet Coke, so... <laughs> Right. What's funny, I was telling Mike before the show, everybody, that I was like, well, I'm going to I'm gonna have to give up soda. And uh, so I'm actually not a coffee drinker, but I'm starting to learn to be a coffee drinker. So I have coffee today. And Mike, instead of having coffee as he normal does, has a soda. <laughs> That's because we're out of water. I got to go get water after we do this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, hey, welcome to the show, everybody. Today we are going to be talking Star Wars, and, I, and we're doing a, kind of like a what if uh, episode. And um, so it's going to be fun to kind of go through and, and have a discussion about primarily what is it? It's if Qui Gon beat Darth Maul, but we are going to use AI to help us write this story. So it's going to be interesting how this works out. We'll be tweaking and stuff along the way, but we got more that we'll talk about here in a little bit. And um, the biggest thing is we are celebrating, was it 20, how many years of Star Wars podcasts? It is, oh, shoot. Is it 20 or 25? I think it's 20. Oh, wait a minute. 1999 was the first uh the premiere of jedi talks it was february 7th 1999 so okay so it's 25 years five years of star wars podcasting and we should probably uh just for those who may be tuning in because it's star wars podcast day um first of all welcome thank you thank you for joining us uh second of all as you can see we are not a premier star wars podcast meaning we don't we don't just just do star wars podcast we do anything in geek culture you know it could be uh star wars it could be dc it could be marvel uh it could be just about anything um but uh i speak for myself when i say my first love in geekdom was star wars so mm -hmm. we do oh, an overabundance of star wars stuff. <laughs> <laughs> even though that we, we are not premier star wars podcast right and we've been celebrating star wars podcast day gosh with hundreds of other podcasts oh yeah. and uh it's great because we start with a number number two it's we're always er, er, real way up on the list when people see the list of podcasts <laughs> i can't cheat <achieve>, yes <laughs> not really well yeah guys sort of but um <laughs> but but if if you check out star wars hashtag star wars podcast day uh, you'll be able to find out more information. Um, and we've been doing this every year since, since we've been doing the podcast. Uh, this and, will be the um, fourth year of star Wars podcast day. And this is our fourth time doing it. So, yeah. So, so we're, uh, we're glad to be a part of it. Yeah. I'm pretty excited. So, so I'm interested. We're going to talk all things star Wars today, specifically about storytelling and stuff, but, Mike, do we want to go ahead and start you doing the our uh, geek tar? Yeah, let's let's jump into the geek tar. Throw with the radar, sir. What's wrong with it? I've lost the bleeps, I've lost the sweeps, and I've lost the creeps. The what? The what? And the what? You know the bleeps, the sweeps, and the creeps. 
<laughs> That's not all he's lost. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and again for anyone new listening uh geek dar is kind of our segment on it, it, it's almost like uh mine and steven's uh uh show and tell time <laughs> yeah what's on our geek radar geek dar. right what's, uh, what's on our geek dar it could be anything from comic books it could be movies tv shows uh pretty much anything um i tend to lean towards comic books quite a bit for for the geek dar uh, segment of the show and today i have yet another comic book <laughs> um, <laughs> most regular fan uh, listeners will know that i am an avid thrawn star wars uh character thrawn fan and a uh, big fan of timothy zahn the the writer and creator of of the thrawn character and i had purchased the thrawn comic books which went with the new well i can't say newest trilogy now because there's another thrawn trilogy out at this point but it was the first thrawn trilogy in the new canon new disney canon uh marvel comic books um a few years back so i had i bought all those and that was of the first thrawn book out of that first trilogy the second thrawn book is called thrawn alliances and they just over the last few weeks released issue number one of the comics adaptation of the Thrawn Alliance novel. So I got that. Mm, looks good. It's a beautiful cover too. Thrawn yeah. looks amazing on it. Now I am disappointed because I wanted to get the, uh, I don't, I don't normally buy alternative covers. Um, Cause I, I just got away from that. You know, years ago I used to do all the collecting and, and I would get, right. you know, multiple, uh, covers and so on and so forth, but um, I've tried to step away from that because it gets expensive, <laughs> and I never sell the darn thing, so I never make any money off of them. So there's just no reason to. But there was an alternate cover for this one. I thought they had a picture of it in here. I guess they don't. Um, and I did go out and look for it, but I couldn't find it. The alternate cover actually looked like one of the alternate covers for the the novel. And it had both oh. Thrawn and Vader on the cover, but it was Thrawn in his, uh, um, yeah, uh, in his Chiss uniform, not in his Empire uniform. Not the Empire uniform. Oh, it was really cool, but I couldn't find it. So, so that's my geek dar for the day. Right on. Okay. Well, cool. <laughs> Delioso. All right. Well, are we ready to go to the main event? Yeah. If you are, we'll see. <laughs> It's time for the main event. There's a big shout out to our friends, the Three Geeky Dads podcast. They posted, hello there. Uh, hello there. <laughs> real, real quick before we get started, let me play yeah. this. You are listening to Mike and Stephen onto Geeks and a microphone. Welcome to the Geek Dom. <laughs> from c3po c3po himself <laughs> right on yes that is the one all right everybody well we're going to hit this because we're going to hit the ground running because um we don't know where this may lead or how this may go but today we're going to use ai to help us do some uh storytelling and um i'm pretty excited to uh, see where this goes. And so Mike had the idea, hey, um, some people seem to be interested in the AI storytelling and how we do it and those kinds of things. And so we're tweaking some abilities and and how to use it. And I use Claude AI for, um, for doing storytelling and things like that. And I've played around with it some. And, and then we use our, uh, 11 labs to do the voices, to have a, uh, an AI voice read it. And they have the most natural sounding AI voices that do it. There, there's some that aren't so much. But there are some that are very, that sound really good. So, um, so with that, we are going to kind of go step by step with a particular idea and just kind of see how things go and particularly focusing on Star Wars. So we're going to create some Star Wars fan fiction 
really is what it boils down to. And then for those who are our Kofi listeners, we are going to actually have the audio book style for it as well. So uh, if you support us on Kofi, we really appreciate it. Uh, we really enjoy it. We've been with them for several years. So it's great because we're locked in at an early bird price. <laughs> um and stuff so um um oh hey sage sage page omega is in the house too as well sage so sage is on twitch um he says morning gentlemen have you guys read the theory of star wars movie having titles in the wrong order i have not no i have not seen that no, I did want to. I did want to uh, interject something here. Uh, yes. First of all, first of all, we have a few Star Wars What If episodes previously. We do. Uh, so we you do. Can, you can go back and you can see those on YouTube or go back and listen to them, whichever mm-hmm. you like. Um, and also, there's rumors that that Star Wars is actually going to possibly do a What If series. So there is a possibility we could get this, this, this officially unofficially. <laughs> I don't know how you say that. <laughs> right. Cause I mean, it wouldn't technically be part of the canon, but it would be official cause it would be Lucasfilms limited doing it. So, or Disney doing it, however you want to say it. So yeah. inter- I, I thought it was interesting that there has been all this talk and, and we've been, dabbling in the what if thing for i don't know two years now so right i think we used uh it was just over a year ago um we were used chat gpt to help us write the stories so this time we're using claude so i'm pretty excited about it um Okay, so here's Sage coming back to give us a little bit more information about it. So he says, what happens in episode one? We meet Anakin Skywalker, the rise of Skywalker. Years later, we found out that Palpatine, leader of the Sith, has ordered an army to destroy the Jedi, Revenge of the Sith. In episode three, Order 66 happens and the clones attack, Attack of the Clones. (laughs) Not bad. (laughs) Not bad. Not bad at all. Well done, actually. All right. All right, everybody. Well, let's get this party started. All right. Dun, 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 dun. I'm going to share my screen, everybody, specifically on um, Claude. What's really fun with with Claude, you can you can have it. You can have it name you. So I did. Welcome back. Oh, Captain, my captain, <laughs> rather than my name. <laughs> That, everybody, is a Dead Poet Society reference, if you have not seen the movie, uh, with the late, great Robin Williams. It is oh, yeah. probably his first huge breakout drama role. Um, it's fabulous. So yeah, just you're probably that. right. So, all right. I never, I never really think about that, but yeah, you're probably right. Um, so here we go, too. everybody. Let's do this. All right. So when do you want to start off? We're going to do this. As I'm going to say, I'm a, so we're going to say... You are a, um, uh, let's see, how should I say this? Star Wars, how should I say this? You are a Star Wars, a, a seasoned and success, uh, successful. What I'm doing here, everybody, is I'm setting up Claude specifically to know kind of the genre where we're headed and what they are. So Star Wars author with over. So if you are a seasoned and successful Star Wars author with over 25 years experience and multiple best sellers. What this does is this tunes this chat. We'll put it that way or this prompt to let Claude know that this is kind of where we're headed. This is who you are. So he'll zoom in and start. The algorithm will, will come from this position. Uh, uh, um, uh, we would like to create a short, I want to say, what if style story um 
we like to create a what if style story um, to explore what if Qui Gon? How do you spell it? Oh my gosh, Qui Gon Jin. I think it's one N, and then I don't know if Jin has two ends or not. I don't remember. Oh my uh, gosh! All of a sudden, I'm having a brain hiccup. This is what happens when you get older, everybody. <laughs> Megan, how do I spell it? How do I spell Qui Gon Jin? Q U I G O N J I N N. Two N's. Ah, there it is. Yep. Hopefully, I put two N's in the title and on the thumbnail. I don't remember if I did or not. <laughs> you did in the title. I can see that. Looks like. Yeah, I don't remember if I did in our thumbnail. I don't or not. The thumbnail. <clears throat> I'm not going to change it if I didn't. Oh, well. Skywalker. <laughs> um, okay. So I said, what if Qui-Gon Jinn survived his battle with Darth Maul and trained Anakin Skywalker? There we um, go. So, so that's next. So I'm going to tell it how big this is. Um, eventually, we want the story to be around... 10,000 words. But first, what would be a good... Uh, now, are you limited on words? Do, do you have... I am not. I pay for... I pay $20 a month for Claude, so I am not limited. Gotcha. Okay. And actually, what's really cool is Claude can take a book of 75,000 words and you can upload it. Everybody see the little paper clip? I can add a PDF, text, CSV, or whatever, and it can be 75,000 words, and I can upload it, and it will read it. Like, I, I put in a book. Um, for those who don't know, I have a, I have a communication-specific um, certification, and I was able to put in a whole book, and I'm having Claude test me from material from the book. So I can actually have it as a teacher to test me. It's it's pretty cool. All right. So, but first, what would be a good st short story framework for this idea along with some story beats? Um, and so that's that's kind of how we're going to start. Okay. So we gave it the idea. We told it, we're, we told it eventually how big it's going to be. Um and first, we're just saying, what's a good short story framework for this idea along with story beats? Why are we doing that? Because we may not like where it may go. So we want to be able to control story beats as we go along. So I'm asking for a gotcha. framework. And and then as we can control the story beats, we can include different ideas. For example, one of the things that we put in our description, everybody, was um, for the show was, well, what, what happens to the relationship with him and Padme? So we want to make sure we include that as well. All right, here we go. I'm going to push enter. Oh, there are so many questions we could go with. All right. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I'm not going to try and read all that while it's going through. <laughs> I know, but it's going pretty quick, right? <laughs> you have a hello from Joe. I believe that's Gerald. Hey, Gerald. <laughs> Gerald. <laughs> right on. Thank you. Okay, so here's what it says, everybody. So here's suggested short story framework with some key story beats for a what if Qui-Gon Jinn survived the battle with Darth Maul and trained Anakin Skywalker scenario. Opening, describe a, the pivotal battle scene where Qui-Gon Jinn defeats Darth Maul but is severely wounded. Obi-Wan helps tend to his wounds as they realize Qui-Gon will live. Qui-Gon feels he, he still has more to teach and, and Anakin still needs training. Then training begins. Show some key elements in Anakin's early Jedi training with Qui-Gon. Highlight Qui-Gon's more rebellious attitudes towards the Jedi Council and how that influences Anakin. Gradually, Qui-Gon becomes into conflict with the Council over training approaches. Turning point. A critical mission tests Qui-Gon and Anakin's relationship. When Anakin loses control of his emotions, he taps into the dark side. Qui-Gon manages to reach him but realizes just how close he came to failing his promise to train Anakin properly. Okay, Making no wait, 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 just just for a second. Can can you go back a little mm -hmm. bit? So, all right, turn uh, turning point, a critical mass, 
a critical mission test Qui Gon Jinn. Make that bigger. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> now I lost where I'm at. Uh, anyway, the so yeah, uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, critical mission. Qui Gon and Anakin's relationship. When Anakin loses control of his emotions, he taps into the dark side. Qui Gon manages to reach. See, this is an interesting idea um, in the fact that we still get Anakin uh, embracing the dark side, but yet he's not he's not necessarily getting uh, uh, um, how should I say groomed by Palpatine in order Mm -hmm. to embrace the embrace the dark side. But it also questions because Qui-Gon goes against the council. So it kind of questions Qui-Gon's stance as somewhere in between the council and in between Anakin's turning to the dark side. So these are, these are really interesting ideas. I I like Mm -hmm. this. Yeah. And the the nice thing is when you do story beats like this, we can go back and change something before we really get rolling. And what's nice is as we've created this chat um, or this, this specific edgy hey as we've created this one it will remember everything claude will remember everything that we've talked about that we've been talking about in this specific area and stuff so <laughs> did you hear the dog dog's going crazy <laughs> it almost That's sounds like dog created to talk to you <laughs> uh, yeah he does he wants to talk and say hi <laughs> Critical mission test Qui-Gon and Anakin's relationship. When Anakin loses control of his emotions, he taps to the dark side. Qui-Gon manages to reach him, but realizes just how close he came to failing his promise to train Anakin properly. Making amends, Qui-Gon admits to Obi-Wan and the council he pushed Anakin too hard too fast. He rededicates himself to patience and moderation in training Anakin. We see Qui-Gon employ more wisdom and restraint. Closing scene. Anakin is knighted, so our big Ultimate, you know, the the kind of the final scene is Anakin is knighted and Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan look on proudly. Qui-Gon reflects on training the Chosen One and while challenging how his survival and guidance helps steer Anakin's future towards bringing balance to the Force. So we can switch. We can change this. I'm okay with him getting knighted and stuff. I do think there's something oh, to yeah, yeah. about the gray Jedi influence. Well, and I, I think it's important that Anakin gets knighted still because we still get the, those Clone War moments. You know, I, I think the Clone Wars would probably still happen. And mm-hmm. and this, maybe we'd see even more Anakin being that hero that we all wanted to see, you know, which we did get in the Clone Wars cartoon series, by the way. Um, mm-hmm. If you've not watched the Clone Wars cartoon series, I highly recommend majority of it. <clears throat> there are some some stinkers throughout it here and there, but for the most part, it is a very good series and I believe it enhances episode one. But um, I think it's important that we see the development of Anakin as a great jewel in the clone wars and Anakin and Obi-Wan's friendship uh, develop also. And this could add add a whole different uh, um, diagram to it or a, a whole different, um, uh, idea in the fact that you still got Qui-Gon around so Qui-Gon can still mentor Obi-Wan also while he's mentoring Anakin and mm-hmm. it kind of gives this whole brothers and father feel to it oh right okay all right let's let's include some of this okay so um um I always I always talk to Claude as I'm talking to someone else because it is a conversational, more sure. conversational style algorithm. Um, and I said, "Great, um, uh, we like." Excuse me, we <laughs> leaky leaky. We like like leaky leaky. Uh, we First like. You're gonna put Loki. <laughs> we right. Loki. Oops. Loki. Wow, Loki. we're really mixing the, the the. We're really mixing the the archetypes. And stories crossing the, streams. That, crossing the streams, crossing the streams. Just FYI, a little fun note on storytelling. Um, so J.R. Tolkien, who wrote Lord of the Rings, was upset. He and C.S. Lewis were good friends, and he always disagreed with C.S. Lewis because C.S. Lewis mixed his myth- mythologies together. 
uh, like he he took from Greek and he took you know Greek mythology, monsters from Greek mythologies, and then and then um, Roman and some other ones, and so um, he always gave him a hard time with that. Oh. Uh, are you seeing uh, Sage's suggestion here? I do. Hey, everybody, we're going to post something real quick. So Sage put this yeah, on. Now, if you guys got a suggestion as we're going through this, uh, throw it yes. out there. Uh, wouldn't it be interesting if Qui-Gon knows his the Chancellor's interest in Anakin and he becomes suspicious and later learns that he is Sith Lord instead of Anakin finding out? Oh, I like that. I like okay. that. Okay. So here's here's what we'll do. Sage, we're going to include Excellent that. Excellent suggestion, Sage. Thank you. All right. Um. Um. We like the story beats and would like to add the following aspects. Uh, in terms of character development, we would like to add the aspect of the um, father son father and son dynamic uh, relation. Let me say relationship dynamic relationship dynamic uh, between Qui-Gon and Anakin along with a brotherhood uh Brotherhood, what's a fun way to say that? Brotherhood, uh, a brotherhood connection. Okay, go ahead. Uh, between Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan and Anakin. Also, Excellent. within the story, um, we would like to add a story beat in the middle of our story where Qui-Gon, Qui-Gon, um, notices the Chancellor's interest, Chancellor Palpatine, Chancellor Palpatine's interest in Anakin and Qui-Gon becomes suspicious suspicious that's okay suspicious yep. I don't think that's how you spell that um, watch this I have a editing software that helps me is it going to get Palpatine right Oh, okay. It's just, it capitalized. I did it. Yeah, just now. Well, hello there. Hello, Angie. Hello. Okay, I'm back, I think. Hello. You were there. You were back, Angie. Okay. Become suspicious. Um, uh, become suspicious. Um, <laughs> he, he starts saying that all I could think of was Elvis' suspicious minds. <laughs> That's a great song. I like the updated version. Too. We we just heard it in uh when we were at uh what's the chicken place, Megan? Uh Cane. Raising Canes. Yeah, you know, we were at Raising Canes and they were playing it. Palpatine is a Sith Lord instead of Anakin. Okay, so I'm just gonna put those points in there. Angie's in a cafe in London right now. Nice. She's across the pond. <laughs> All right. So here's what's happening. We're getting our story beats. And. Um, yeah, I'm not reading that all through. <laughs> yeah, I'll get it. Well, it goes pretty quick. I, I like how it does. Yeah, that. I, okay, I, so I, here we go. So here's what Claude says. Excellent additions, exclamation point. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> we can enrich those relationships and build tension around Palpatine. The father-son dynamic show tender moments between Anakin and Qui-Gon, perhaps Anakin seeking his wisdom and approval, that fatherly approval. I like that. Yep. Yet also tension as Qui-Gon's unorthodox training conflicts with Anakin's patience. Perhaps per perhaps a rift forms at one point, leading to a turning point of Anakin tapping into his anger because he feels abandoned or betrayed. Their reconciliation then becomes more powerful. 
See, and I like I like that they have a re- reconciliation there, and it doesn't separate them, but mm-hmm. and it makes it more powerful. That I like that idea. Yep. Great idea. Um, Obi-Wan Anakin Brotherhood early on show camaraderie and humor between them as peers despite the gay ja- age gap. Obi-Wan can relate better to Anakin's frustrations with Qui-Gon <laughs> while also encouraging patience and restraint. Adds a great secondary perspective on Anakin's training. Nice. Uh, suspicious of Palpatine. Midpoint, Qui-Gon notices Anakin speaking frequently of Palpatine, who subtly criticizes the Jedi as being holding Anakin back. Qui-Gon researches in the archives and tracks clues that make him investigate Palpatine as possibly being the Sith Lord. Hmm. Uh, confrontation, Qui-Gon accuses Palpatine and fights him in a duel alone where Palpatine almost kills him, but it confirms the truth to the council. Sets up Palpatine as the ultimate villain going forward and adds tension, knowing he's secretly evil well before the pe- the prequel reveals. Interesting. So... It's almost like we took, so we had the aspect of, uh, of Qui-Gon research in it. That feels almost like uh, Obi-Wan in episode two, when he goes to the, uh, the Jedi archives and yes. he, he's, he's looking for, well, he, he was looking for um, Camino. Yeah. Camino. So that almost sounds like that. And then the confrontation almost sounds like Mace Windu when he's coming in to mm-hmm. arrest Palpatine. So, Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I, I think we've got some neat setup. So I hope this is helpful yeah. everybody so you can learn how to use um, AI on your own or for yourself. If if uh, you're really curious about trying out AI, um, I would suggest a tool called openrouter.ai. You can, you can just add a little bit of money to it and you can use any kind of model you want. All the ones that are out there, chat GPT 3.3, 3.5, 4, turbo, um, plus, or you can use Claude version one, two, or three. You can use other ones and some are free to use. So, um, oh. free is free, free 90 free is great. I have found personally Claude to be the best storytelling AI. That's why I bought a subscription to it. Uh, I just, I'm learning about storytelling. Uh, I have AI teaching me about storytelling too, as well. Those kinds of things. Now, so, so what we did, everybody was we, we got our idea. Then we said, let's put our idea in a short story framework. What what, what does that look like? And then we kind of confirmed some stuff, added some things. So now here's what I'm going to do. Uh, <laughs> As you see, stage, stage is coming. How to use AI story. Sage, answer. Just ask Mike and Steven. <laughs> Steven's more the expert than I am. I, I'm 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 the Padawan learner at this also. So I I'm also part of a group um, called Story Hackers, and um, the nerdy novelist on YouTube is the guy who runs that, and um, he is such a genuine. The guy who does it, nerdy novelist, just such a genuine guy, and is really good. It is a monthly thing, but he teaches you all about AI storytelling. He's now going into how to build a business if you want to do writing, all kinds of different things, and and he's just open and learning along the way. He edits stuff along with us. He interacts. He just did a for the first time the other day. He did a Zoom call for everybody who wanted the personal challenge along with him about story writing your story and getting your story done because his goal is to help everybody in the group write your first book kind of a thing so it's a neat guy he really is i I, so nerdy novelist you can get a lot of his stuff right off 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 his youtube channel but i i want to support him and that's how i support him okay so now i'm gonna tell claude great uh or i'll say fantastic fantastic um those are great. Can you now um, reorganize or can you now organize? I'm going to say organize um, our story beats in into uh, into chapters along with a short description. Uh, for each chapter using the best storytelling frameworks for Star Wars novellas. Um, um, 
after we once we develop the outline we will flesh out flesh out each chapter but wait for our prompts um uh for the chapter expansion so i'm telling it what i want now and what we're going to do with it so what that is is it's telling the ai that hey here's what we want to do but this is going to be the purpose for it so it knows to remember and it knows to keep things um it, it knows how we're trying to organize things so sometimes um as you get deeper and deeper you have to remind claude or any ai even chat gpt you've got to remind them okay take this chapter summary you know remember the last chapter remember chapter one as we go into chapter two and expand into chapter two so you you have to tell it where what to read sometimes as you go along so all right here we go so now what we're going to do everybody is now we're going to see what it does it's going to give us our chapter beats um and then um and it's we're going to go through each one. Now, each chapter can be one to two thousand words. Um, and uh, we'll see how it goes. It may end up being longer. We may not. We're probably not going to get all this done. <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll get some connections, too. So it's doing a. Well, and we chat. haven't even broached the uh, Anakin and Padme side of the story either. So, <laughs> yeah. I, mean, um, I don't think we're going to be able to get into that today, but yeah, I think, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of see where that goes. Cause that could be, even be a sequel to this is then as we continue as a Jedi Knight. So this is him becoming the Jedi Knight. There you go. Then it's the Jedi Knight into Jedi master. And, and then what did that relationship brings up those emotions and what that looks like? Ooh, Ooh, that may be. I may be good. Okay, everybody, I'm going to read through these real quick. Here we go. Here's an outline organized by chapters with short descriptions for a Star Wars novella using our established story beats. Chapter one, survival. Established status quo change. Um, so what the parentheses is doing, everybody, as we're re reading through this, is so survival, in parentheses, sta established status quo change, is the storytelling framework. So it's telling us what it's doing within the storytelling framework. So if you're curious about what kind of storytelling outline it's using, it's just telling us. So chapter one is all about establishing the status quo change. So survival. Qui-Gon narrowly survives his duel with Darth Maul, resolved to train Anakin despite his severe wounds. Um, chapter two, training begins. Parentheses is the new situation. Qui-Gon's unconventional training of Anakin causes friction with the Jedi Council as he pushes boundaries. Chapter three, brotherhood. Building relationships, build relationships. During training on missions, Obi Wan and Anakin bond like brothers, providing levity before tensions rise. Love it. Chapter four: Recklessness, our inciting incident. Anakin's anger and pride endanger a mission. He taps into the dark side, wounding Qui Gon emotionally. Um, chapter five: Betrayal. Conflict. This is where conflict escalates in the story. Feeling abandoned by Qui Gon's criticism after the mission, Anakin distances himself, secretly meeting with Palpatine. Um, Qui Gon would be very grumpy right now. He would be. <laughs> Chapter six: Amends. Attempt at reconciliation. Qui Gon realizes he was too harsh. Apologizes and reassures a distrustful Anakin, recommitting to train him with patience. Chapter 7, Suspicions. Here's our twist. Qui-Gon investigates clues that make him suspect Palpatine is a Sith Lord as he manipulates Anakin from the shadows. Chapter 8, Confrontation. Major setback. Qui-Gon confronts Palpatine but is nearly killed in a fierce duel. But now the Jedi Council is alerted to the truth about Palpatine. Chapter 9, Trust. The Darkest Moment. Um, while healing, Qui-Gon despairs over almost losing Anakin to the dark side until Obi-Wan helps restore Anakin's faith in his master. Chapter 10, Balance, our climax and resolution of our story. Anakin lets go of resentment towards Qui-Gon. He passes Jedi trials overseen by the Council, the Chosen One's future more hopeful. 
and says, let me know if you would like me to expand on any chapter description in more detail before moving forward. Ready to dive into expanding each chapter whenever you give the word. So it remembered I told wait for the prompts. Right. I like that. That's cool. You like that? So, so, far, far. so far, I like it. A, a lot of it sounds really interesting. And it sounds like it could take the Star Wars universe in a completely different direction. Um, and I, I love this idea of Qui-Gon and his, his training being different than what the council would see, because we could eventually see this developing into a new training process for the council, you know, mm -hmm. um, in, in a way that Jedi's would be trained differently going forward. So, yeah, yeah, this could completely change the Star Wars universe. I really like it. See, my thing is, is what if thinking of the Mortis trilogy, because I love the Mortis trilogy. That's sure. that's one of my favorite storytellings and stuff. I would. Um, what if he still became more he became the balance in the force while he's training? He understands, you know, and I don't want to take gray Jedi too far, that concept too far. But it, it is that aspect of what if he brings balance to the force because he is he is truly both light and dark, like we see in Ahsoka, right. you know, at the fact, Ooh, say just got something was, um, um, he said, Sage page says, uh, Oh, uh, uh, in the area of Anakin secretly meeting with Palpatine, he is informed by Palpatine that Qui-Gon is friends with Dooku. And he is the main reason for Dooku being how he is, which adds more of a rift with Anakin and Qui-Gon. Oh, <laughs> and then he said, because what, it doesn't age. Because he doesn't, uh, because now he doesn't know who to really trust. That's good. Okay. Oh, I like that. I like that. Yeah. I didn't even think about bringing in Count Dooku, but that makes a lot of sense. Too. That would be chapter. Uh, that especially, would be chapter five. Especially if if uh, um, if Darth Maul is killed. I don't. I don't know if he's killed in this process. If he is killed, then that that. I think elevates Count Dooku as far as being a, an apprentice. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that. I like that yeah. bringing Dooku as a, yeah, nice. Yep. Okay. So um, let's start working on chapter one. Um, All right. Please give me a. Um, please give me an outline. Uh, let, let's see. Now nah, let's just go ahead and start writing. Let's stop with outlines. Let's start working on chapter one. Please provide a 1000 word, um, exciting start to our story based upon our chapter one story beat um, now, i do have a question about claude so um yeah. i know chat gtp chat tpt's uh memory is what good only up to like what four years ago or something like that anything anything between now and like four years ago she she really doesn't or chat gtp doesn't really know anything yeah so, um claude you knowledge more uh massive. I, don't, I don't know to be open with you i'm not really for sure um i do know that chat gpt4 is now linked with bing so it does have access to the internet okay. so you can use bing chat which is chat gpt4 and you can actually go through the web and it'll even cite its sources you can oh, tell it to cite wow. sources and stuff and where it gets from the web and stuff. Now, if you go to those links, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. So, <laughs> so it tells me that it's using an old, you know, kind of the Wayback Machine, that website Wayback Machine. I think it's doing that kind of stuff. So not really for sure. Um, yeah. um, um, so Claude is <laughs> But just much more better. Thank you, Sage. Yes. Aha. Cheers. <laughs> All right. This nice. Sage um, got it in. This scene. Um, okay. Um, so here we go. I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to say, based upon our chapter one story beat. 
So here's a 950 word start to chapter one. So it's going to 950 words is quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what we're going to yeah, do, everybody, is get this whole thing done, but <clears throat> right. But we will put we will put the finished product on on our uh, Kofi page, so you will be able to um, look at it there for sure. Yeah, maybe maybe yeah. Stephen will come up with cover art for it. Even uh, I can do cover art. I use uh, that's where I use uh, Open Router AI because you get access to no no, no I use Poe Poe dot com will give you access to also a whole bunch of other ones, but you get so many credits a month for free, and um, and so I use those credits for gener- learning to generate pictures. Stable Diffusion is a good one. Um, and uh, there's another one that I use that's pretty good. Cool. Now, while this is generating, uh, yeah, so good if, night. Yeah, yeah. So, if anyone is interested, you know, if you have an interest in in this AI story writing thing, Stephen did do an episode uh, himself uh, a few weeks ago when I was out seeing the Dallas Cowboys play. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, he 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 did an episode on uh, story writing with, with uh, Claude a few weeks ago, so you can always go back and check that out too. Yep. <clears throat> Good episode too. It was cool. All, All right, right, so we have chapter one now. So I'm going to read chapter one, everybody, just to enjoy. It's this is really primarily for our listeners. Uh, so Qui Gon Jinn could feel the burn in his muscles with every step as he raced through the Theed Power Station reactor core. His emerald lightsaber clashing fiercely with the red double-bladed saber of the Sith Lord Darth Maul. He had vastly underestimated Maul's skills and speed, nearly paying for it with his life several times over already during their duel. But failure was not an option now with Queen Amidala's freedom at stake and the young and the fate of the young Anakin Skywalker still undecided (laughs) Um, gritting through another wave of searing pain Qui-Gon leapt onto a narrow catwalk narrowly avoiding a blow that could have severed his leg the sweat beaded on his forehead not just from exertion but the extreme heat still radiating from the plasma energy channels crisscrossing beside their elevated dueling ground He risked a quick glance over his shoulder to see his Padawan Obi-Wan blocked behind red energy raid shields, helpless to aid him. I was picking up right at episode one, right at the end. (laughs) The battle was Qui-Gon's alone, but he was tiring fast while Maul seemed energized and empowered by his mounting injuries. Two more strikes clashed dangerously close to his ear with Maul's skilled double saber slashes. Qui-Gon gave ground, trying to guide them closer towards the edge of the reactor shaft, where he might knock the Sith off balance for a moment. As See, and I love were, this. It's not taking anything away from Darth Maul at all. He's no, still uh, just the total badass that he is. Yeah. Love it. And now here's the thing. It also knows the story to episode one. Could you catch yes. that? And we didn't yes. catch it that. It already yeah, knew it. It, it talked about Padme and her right. fate and everything. So nice. that's the other thing is why I said at the beginning, you are a 25 year old veteran and Star Wars storyteller, you know, so good it Very good knew thing. it knew to focus in on it as their sabers locked tight. Maul fixed his yellow eyes on Qui-Gon's steely gaze. You cannot win, old man. I can feel your fatigue with every strained breath. You should have died years ago, forgotten like the withered ancient religion you cling to. He spat with venomous hatred. Nice. Qui-Gon did not take Maul's taunting bait, suddenly adjusting his stance as if weakening while holding his lightsaber, the lightsaber lock with the burly Zabrak. Zabrak? Burly Zabrak. wonder what that is. Zabrak. That's what, that's what Darth Maul is. He's a Zabrak. That's his race. Oh, I never made that connection. It yep. already knew that. We didn't have to teach it that. It already knew that. Knew nope. that better than I knew. What the what? This is cool. Just to reaffirm Sage's thing. So Claude is much more better. Cheers. (laughs) So anyone new listening, uh, that much more better is kind of our little catchphrase. Every time we say it, we say cheers and take a drink. So, yeah. Uh, Your confidence betrays. Your confidence betrays you. I sense great fear in your passion and anger. Qui-Gon calmly replied. 
With sudden and explosive power, Maul shoved hard to break the saber lock, whipping around with blinding speed for a lower diagonal slash aimed to cut Qui-Gon in two across the torso. But the Jedi Master sidestepped quicker than Maul expected, dropping to one knee while slashing his emerald blade upwards across Maul's right thigh as he stumbled past. The Sith mm. howled in surprised pain as his leg buckled, blackening flesh showing through the slit robes. Falling to uh, falling to one hand on the catwalk floor, Maul's rage tripled as Qui-Gon swiftly rose back to his feet. Turning and putting weight on his weakened leg caused Maul to limp, but he charged forward with a furious scream. Jabbing blows rained down on Qui-Gon, who slid back, deflecting them, the catwalk edge now pressing against his heels. Maul saw fatal victory flash before his yellow eyes bringing his double saber up vertically to cleave Qui-Gon's skull. But the Ooh. Jedi Master had guided them to this trap perfectly. With the last of his power, he leapt straight forwards, upwards. Maul's saber sliced, on sliced only air as his inertia carried him forward, right over the catwalk edge into the endless reactor core shaft. His scream echoed until silenced by a distant flash far below. Qui-Gon landed gracefully, barely, his energy spent completely. The red shield wall lowered and Obi-Wan sprinted to him. Master, that was incredible. I could barely follow. He trailed off as Qui-Gon slumped down against the rail, his face drained of color. Obi-Wan quickly examined the deep, charred slash across Qui-Gon's abdomen, trying to keep the fear from his voice. Just stay still, Master. We'll get you patched. A firm grip on his shoulder stopped his attempt to ex examine further. Qui-Gon's normally steely eyes were softer now, full of Obi-Wan's concern. It's bad, my young Padawan. I cannot yet join the Force, though. The prophecy. Pain cut his words short as Obi-Wan squeezed his hand tightly to comfort him. Nice. Qui-Gon's Qui thoughts turned to young Anakin as his head swirled. This timid but talented boy destined, it seemed, to bring balance to the Force itself in time. But he still needed proper training that Qui-Gon now wondered if he could provide. Another wave of agony tensed his tall frame. Through it, Qui-Gon managed to turn his gaze back to Obi-Wan with as much resolute focus as he could summon. Promise me you'll train the boy when this is over. He trailed off as unconsciousness nearly took him. Obi-Wan, fearful tears in his eyes, could not yet let go. Of course, Master, but you can still... Another weak squeeze of his hand cut short his protest. Promise me, Qui-Gon whispered hoarsely. Swallowing the lump in his throat, Obi-Wan finally nodded, wiping an arm across his face. You have my word, Master. Now come on, let's get you out of here. Obi-Wan said he, as he carefully draped Qui-Gon's massive arm over his shoulder. The injured Jedi could only grit his teeth against the throbbing pain, hoping the Force would sustain him long enough to fulfill his vital promise regarding the Chosen One's destiny. And there you have Chapter One. That is cool. I really like it. Wow. Wow. Yeah, mm. it's fun. I mean, and, and the nice thing is, is as you go along... Um, you can um, you can tweak stuff. You go, I, you know, let's change this or let's do this. So, I mean, we're still in control of the story, and and so what AI does is it helps us get our what we have in our mind onto paper, but at the same time, or onto paper or onto text, and and then at the same time, it helps us so you're not struggling with um, writer's block. It gives you options, you know, kind of a thing as you go along. And so you are working together with AI to bring your stories to life. Now, some people say, well, that's cheating. Nah, it's not cheating. You, it's you, you, it, I mean, yeah, should you be open about saying, hey, we used AI to create the story and we work together with AI? Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. What's Sage Pages in? Sage, let's see what Sage says. Sage says, those 950 words alone are better than Rogue One and or Ray story and all of Disney. LOL. Ouch. Best, hashtag best Star Wars ever. <laughs> oh, dang. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I'd say better than Rogue One per se. Uh, 
some of the others I, I would agree with Sage on. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I wish we could take all the credit for it, but we can't. <laughs> right. We can't. But see, this is for us. This is this is for us to do and enjoy right. and sure. that kind of a thing. So yeah. And then I just I just want to be clear. If you're supporting us on Kofi, we will have the or, or we'll work on the audio this week to get the the audio done. It, it, it'll be a, like someone reading a book. It won't be full cast or anything like that. I, I just can't do that. Um, I don't have the capability to do that yet, nor the editing prowess to do that yet. <laughs> Um, but or I want to be clear that, that you're supporting us. So just it's just our gift to you just for supporting us. So um, we're not trying to make money on a Star Wars thing. I want to be clear on that. Um, oh, definitely. No. And all we're just you know making it as a, a as a gift, but the but the story once we get the story done, I'll try to get it into a, a into um into an ebook format so that way on our Kofi page for all of our listeners for everyone um, subscriber or not um, you can you can pull it down and enjoy it kind of well and like I said I really like where this story is going because I mean first of all again it does not take away from Darth Maul it doesn't take anything you know from his uh, ability that still makes him out to be as awesome as he he is in in episode one Mm -hmm. and it I think it enhances Qui-Gon's abilities a little bit more, which mm-hmm. I like, but it also doesn't take away from the dramatic scene at the end where it, it's kind of the teasing end of episode you. one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that where it's, it's teasing you at this point that Qui-Gon could still die here, you know? Yeah. Um, obviously we know he's not because that's our, what if, what if he survives, but mm-hmm. it's, it's putting him in a peril position that he still could die and you no, know, and it still leaves it all kind of open for the moment. Yeah. So I like, so, it. Yeah, I like we just, we just wrote uh, almost a thousand words. Now, most books, you know, just regular, what's the, what's here. Let's do this. Um, um, let's go to, we're going to say how, how many words are in a, uh, s- science fiction novel. Sound good? Okay. Science fiction and fantasy novels typically have word count between 90,000 and 125,000 words. Nice. Okay. So, um, uh, let's ask this. How many words are in s- Star Wars, a new hope novel. Uh, how many words were in uh, 11,684 total words? Holy cow. <laughs> and how many words do we have in wait, that first wait, wait, chapter? Wait, wait, wait. That doesn't sound right. How many, There are 165. Yeah, that's right. Uh, right. No, that's just words. No, that's the, let me rephrase that. That's not, that's how. Yeah, I was going to say, that cannot be right. That cannot <laughs> be right. Uh what is the word count in Star Wars A New Hope novel? Uh, I don't know. Oh, wait. Oh, William Shakespeare's Star Wars, Verily A New Hope, is, has 44,000 words. So my point being is we just wrote 1,000 words with AI in really, we got started 30 minutes ago, you know, after doing, after doing the the pre-work. And so you figure you could, uh, a novel, a novella. So we could ask how many words in a novella. So how many words in a, uh, science fiction, uh, fantasy novella. Uh, novella is 20,000 to 40,000 words. So you figure we could do that in 10 hours. So you could write a book on a, in a weekend. Let's see. Sage says a new hope, uh, info author, Lucas, George Lucas word count 56,000 based on page count. Page count. Okay. Pages is 224. Okay. Nice. Look at nice. Sage. Thank you, Sage. 
It's getting in in there. I love it. 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 So, um, <clears throat> so you could do that on, you know, on a weekend kind of a thing. You could write a 30,000 word novella. Now we're shooting really for 10,000, you know, on this, I kind of see. Okay. So that is a wonderful start. Thank you. Um, uh, please continue with the, um, uh, re uh, remembering chapter one, please, um, write a 1000 word count chat. Uh, or the word count for uh, chapter two based upon the story beat. Now you can also tell it now I'm, we're not going to do this, but you can tell AI to write in a particular author style. So write in a similar style as Stephen King. You can do that, uh, which is really interesting. I've, I have tried that, uh, which is really fascinating to do that. So, um, or you can say, hey, use a more upbeat tone, or you can say, you know, make this chapter more emotional or, you know, focus in on the emotional side, you know, those kinds of things. We're not going to do that because that just gets really nerdy and detailed. So, so now, now we're going to. I have a question. So sure, go ahead. You, you well, put I, in there. You you said remembering chapter one. Do you need yes. to do that before it is? It, I have found it is wise to do that. Um, so it remembers where it's coming from, and then it helps you know where it's going. Gotcha. Kind okay. of a thing. I mean, it's good to know those types of prompts and stuff. So <clears throat> it does. the The prompts make a difference now. The the nerdy novelist is really a good uh, he's got some you can watch his YouTube videos for free and he gives you some of these prompts within those videos. Kind of why he like if you look at one, he's got a, a, a super prompt. He calls them super prompts where they're just ginormous. They're huge and, and they bring out all the different aspects of remember the last chapter. Here's the story beats and and. And it's pretty fascinating. Um, I'm not quite there yet at my skill level of using super prompts. I will eventually. Um, I'm just spending this time just to get some ideas together and practicing writing short stories. I'm writing right now, I'm writing one on an OCD assassin. Um, an assassin, a female assassin who has OCD and can't stand the sight of blood. <laughs> <laughs> it was my wife's idea. <laughs> So, I love it. That's funny. Uh, and the whole scene takes place where he has she has to infiltrate a uh, a mansion to kill someone, and she usually is pretty stealthy, but something goes wrong, and so then she actually she can't shoot from afar. She has to actually go into the house, and then she has to confront her OCD as she goes through the house. So it's an action comedy style. Nice. Yeah. All right. Well, so, you you know I have an idea for a, a kind yep. of a horror yep. comedy but i don't want to i don't want to reveal what it is because i i haven't started quite started yet and i yeah yeah i don't want to give give anything away until i'm fairly sure i'm gonna finish it <laughs> yeah it's all good you'll get it the the fun thing is is as you work with ai it makes it fun and engaging so yes it's work oh, yeah i'm loving this but it's fun yeah and there is another tool out there, everybody, um, that if you're really going to get into writing, because um, it, it is a paid subscription service. So if you really want to do it and create worlds and stuff like that, um, it's called Novel Crafter. And um, you can get information on it through Nerdy Novelist's YouTube channel. So you can go there and um, it... It will help you do character development, character, all kinds of character arc stuff you can do. Um, it'll keep, it will re automatically remember everything so you don't have to tell it to remember. Um, and as you write the story, it'll reference links. It'll create links within your story back to your character development stuff so you can go back and forth. It'll recognize places, locations, your lore. Um, it has what they call a codex where you put all of your lore in and it remembers all of that to help you write your story and so, 
I, I just I, something just struck me. Would sure. would you recommend using like Chat GTP to like start getting your characters and certain ideas, and then start taking that information and plug it into something like Claude or one of the others? Yeah, if you really get into it, your um, you can use Chat GPT to do your character development, your world building. It it Chat GPT is still good. Um, I'm not saying it. Uh, hopefully, people don't hear me saying that it's not. If you like using that oh, stuff, I'm not hearing that. I'm not hearing that. I'm just Chat GPT will help you do details and things, and then you can take those and port those over into um, Claude. If gotcha. you want, Claude is great for the s- developing the story. It's just more fluid to me personally. Right. I think it's more fluid um, when it does storytelling. Um, and um, so it, it, it is nice. If you're going to create worlds though, where you're really going to do that, I would recommend a tool like novel crafter to help you do that. I mean, see, we were already uh starting with characters that are known and created, we didn't have to worry about making anything up. So, mm-hmm. you know, I was just thinking maybe you could start with chat GTP, make up those characters into it and then start plugging that stuff into something similar to Claude or whatever, you know? Yeah. If you're going to start doing details like that, I would recommend novel crafter to, to move sure. into the novel crafter though. You have to have an API. In other words, you have to have a script that connects to whatever your, your AI service is. Now I've got mine connected to open router. Now it doesn't use uh, a whole lot, but it can use a whole lot of tokens as it's called within AI. Um, but tokens are, can be super cheap. And there's other AIs out there that are still in the beta stages and you can use them for free. Now their storytelling is not as good, but they're learning. And that's the whole point. They're, they're learning. Um, so it's pretty cool. So, yeah. So when you're using Novel Crafter, you're using the you're using the codex and the organization to to get it all together, kind of like a a book format or a book writing software program is really what it is. But it just happens to connect with your AI of choice if you have an API. So that would be like Chat GPT. You could hook it up to if you have a subscription. That's G- GPT four. You have to have a subscription to get an API code. Um, or you can connect it with open router and you can tell it which AI you want it to use. And it'll tell you how many tokens you're using and, and it's a pay as you go. And some people think pay as you go is better because if you, you know, it, with Claude, if I don't use, if I don't use $20 worth of the month, it just, that's just how it is. I don't, right, you know, yep. you know, so, um, so it is a, it is a nice, it is a nice way to do that. All right, real quick, we'll, we'll read chapter two here to kind of continue our our thing. So, and then um, and then we'll kind of see where we want to go from there. All right, uh, the mood in the Jedi chapter two, the mood in the Jedi Temple healing ward was tense as the attendant droids completed their back to treatments on Qui Gon Jinn's severe lightsaber wounds. Oh, well, it, even, to- it even remembered back to. I love it. Yep. While the Bacta tanks accelerated tissue ge- regeneration, the saber slashes from Maul's double-bladed delivering delivered lasting damage. The treatments would take time to restore even a fraction of Qui-Gon's formidable stamina and mobility. Only his strong connection to the Force persevered, excuse me, preserved his life thus far. Yet, propped up on a med table with hair still wet, Qui-Gon was already stubbornly trying to stand as Mace Windu and several council members entered. I said no visitors or oh, oh, the droid. I said no visitors until tomorrow. This Jedi needs rest, the medical droid fussed, trying unsuccessfully to get its patient to lay still. That's quite all right, TT423. I feel well enough for some conversation. Qui-Gon rasped, his voice still mending as well, despite the forced bravado. Mace glanced sidelong at Master Yoda, who simply hobbled ahead, studying Qui-Gon intently. Hmm. Rest you should, but listen, the council will. Yoda said as he tapped his gimmer, gimmer stick knowingly. Good night. It's bringing up all kinds of stuff. I, I, I guess know. that's just cane. I don't know. The, the cane. That's what I've, I've never heard of that 
referred to in Star Wars, but okay. Yeah. The other council members arrayed themselves around Qui-Gon's med table and look with looks ranging from relief to lingering concern over the narrowly avoided disaster on Naboo. While we rejoice at your survival, Master Jin, there is the troubling matter of this Sith to discuss and how he eluded our detection for so long. Mace began, his normally smooth voice edged with frustration. Qui-Gon considered his response, absently rubbing at his tender abdomen. I agree with your concerns, Master Windu, but I know at the very least the immediate threat this warrior posed has passed. We must investigate how the dark side shrouds the scope of the Jedi moving forward. More to discuss later, that will be. For now, healed you must get, Yoda interjected before another debate began around mysteries of the force qui-gon dipped his head respectfully at the grand master's wisdom of course master yoda but first here he drew himself up more upright with some effort i formally request to take anakin skywalker as my padawan learner the simple statement caused an eruption of hushed discussions and traded glances around the room only yoda remained silent his large eyes studying qui-gon thoughtfully finally mace raised a hand to restore order while Skywalker's actions helped save Naboo, he is still far past the age for proper training. There is great risk he could follow darker paths without the correct discipline. Qui-Gon kept his expression neutral despite the surge of impatience at hearing the familiar protests. With respect, Master Windu, Anakin has already demonstrated a powerful connection to the Force few his age could match. And in defeating that Sith, the prophecy of... Ah, uh, yes, this prophecy of yours, Mace interrupted. <laughs> Based on what actual evidence from our records, his raised eyebrow showed skepticism towards mysticism. Yeah, I like Mace Windu. <laughs> yeah. Biting back further arguments, Qui-Gon tried another tactic. I only ask that the council administers the test to confirm Anakin's affinity. Grant me custody to train him if he passes. I fully embrace the responsibility. He allowed a touch of defiance to enter his voice on the last line, the council traded thoughtful looks between themselves. Finally, Yoda tapped his stick firmly to call their attention back. Right, Qui-Gon is. Test the boy we shall. Then decide, can we? He gestured toward the exit, giving Qui-Gon a subtle wink. With the council adjourning, Mace leaned in close to Qui-Gon. Do not mistake our granting the trials as approval for training the boy Qui-Gon. His anger and fear run clearly deep. You'll carry heavy burden if Skywalker falls astray to darkness. Boy, what a threat. <laughs> <laughs> Qui-Gon met his concerned gaze steadily as he stood, hiding. Mace his don't play, man. Mace don't right. play. <laughs> yeah. Then it is good I have some experience bearing heavy burdens, Master. With another polite bow, he allowed the medical droid to escort him towards back to therapy, his mind turning towards Anakin's future. Two days later, Anakin stood nervously in the center of the High Jedi Council Chamber, trying not to fidget as he felt the intense stares from the Twelve Masters seated around him. He recognized Master Windu in the small green one called Yoda, who had asked him all sorts of strange questions so far about the Force, and his heart pounded knowing Qui-Gon was observing closely from, from an, an shadowed alcove, still recovering but determined to support Anakin through these mysterious tests. Clear your mind, young one. The stern face Mace Windu suddenly rumbled, his tone surprisingly less harsh than when addressing Qui-Gon. We wish to explore your connection, uh, the Force, your connection to the Force without preconceptions. Anakin gulped, not really understanding, but resigning himself with a slow exhale. He had no idea what to expect now. Glancing towards Qui-Gon for reassurance, the tall Jedi Master gave an almost imperceptible nod and wave of confidence. Okay. Just feel it like always, Annie, the young boy repeated to himself, willing his senses to spread out like he instinctively felt on pod races. The council members exchanged intrigued glances as objects around the room began gently rattling. Yoda's eyes widened in surprise as even his gamer stick tilted up off the floor. Anakin stood in calm focus until Master Windu gestured to end the exercise. As the council discussed privately, Anakin bit his lip, anxiously watching their expression closely. Please let them say yes. Qui-Gon believes in me. I want this more than anything. His fists tighten nervously. Nice. Nice. I like it. I like yeah. it. This is cool. <clears throat> yeah. So. Well, um, let's see. Oh, oh. 
Um, here's uh, Sage Space says the Gimmer Stick purpose. The Gimmer Stick was a wooden cane used by Grandmaster Yoda during the last decades of the Galactic Republic. And up until his death, shortly before the Battle of Endor, the stick was made from a Gimmer bush, which grew on many worlds, including Kashyyyk and Dagobah. Wow. Look at Sage. 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 What? That's well, awesome. That is great. I, I'd it, never heard of it referred to as a gimmer stick. So that's cool. Yeah. But wow. now I will always think of it as the gimmer stick. So. Right. And what's Very interesting cool. is we didn't have to tell Jet GPD that. Again, no, it's it's how you true. set it up in, in the beginning, you're a 25 year best selling uh, Star Wars author and all I'm that kind of stuff. Impressed. I'm impressed. This done. This has done a great job so far. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what the rest of the story is going to be. <clears throat> yeah. So, whew. wow, wow, what a great start! So we only got two chapters done. We got that chapter done in half an hour. So you can see. I mean, as you go through it, that when you the way you set it up can help really lead into how it gets accomplished, and and you can copy and paste each section so to copy and paste that into a um into a just a ebook format would be really easy and stuff like right. that so nice okay yeah. well i'm really liking this this is cool i i cannot wait to to hear or read the end of it it's it's gonna be good yeah yeah i agree it's it's good <laughs> stuff i some good stuff right there Nice. All right. Well, sorry we couldn't get it all done, everybody, because I think it's going to turn out more. So, uh, uh, oh, here's Sage. Sage is popping in again. Here he goes. Two hours over 800 words. Yoda's voice. Much revealed there was. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he's a man of few words. <laughs> right. So you figure we've already put an hour into it. We've We've developed the idea, kind of a, the big idea behind it. We've done a story description. Then we did story beats. Then we took those story beats and turned them into chapters, um, into an outline. And then now we're just telling this, remember chapter one, remember chapter two. You know, now we'll tell it, remember chapter one and two. Now, now write chapter three. And then you just go through and, and then you tell it, you can tell it to then remember just chapter three. You don't have to tell it to remember chapter one, two, and three, but you can, um, and it will bring out certain parts. So, so I'll do what I can to see if we can't get this looking really, really nice and pretty and, uh, and get it done and get it, get the ebook to our Kofi folks. And then, um, I'll have to figure out how to get it done in 11 labs is what I use um, for the voice. And, and it does a really nice job. Um, cool. I have done one. I've done a couple of stories in one. I, and I've done both in with, with that plus some ambient noise behind it. I don't think I'll do ambient noise behind this one because it'd be kind of big and kind of long. Um, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Okay, cool. You know. Cool. Well, I'm looking forward to it. This is, this is this turned out to be an even cooler idea than I thought when I first came up with the idea. So, right, I'm really happy yeah. with it. Hopefully, yeah. everyone else likes this. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, I think we should start wrapping things up. Um, okay. You want to go through well, your first few, Stephen? I will. Hey, everybody. As we mentioned, um, I'm going to give you the the website. It's www.kofi.com slash two geeks. So ko fi.com. Um, some people say Kofi. Some people say coffee um, slash two geeks. That's the number, number two, two, uh, G E E K S. Um, but if you just want to go to our website, um, www.twogeeksmike.com. Um, you can, if you look at the menu at the top, you can get to our Kofi page from there, as well as to our um, website page, which I put up on the screen, two geeks and microphone post shop, fourthwall.com. But forget that. Just go to, da, 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 wait for it, two geeks, Mike, merch.com. Mike did a nice job with that. So, to the number two geeks, Mike merch.com. Um, and you can see all of our merch page stuff, uh, that we've got on there. We'll be adding some more stuff. I'm, 
uh, we've got some neat ideas to do that. But just hit our website. That'll also take you to um, all kinds of aspects um, of the Sue Geeks realm. It, it is kind of our hub. I'm, I'll be updating it um, hopefully today and tomorrow as well with some new info and stuff. So that is the game plan, everybody. Um, and um, also we want to let you know that we don't yet have – a, an affiliate link to Novel Crafter or anything like that yet, but we may just look into that and see if I, we can do I that. I like how you said we don't yet have that. <laughs> right. But we're going to see what we can do. Hey, if you do want to reach out to us at, at Two Geeks, the best way to is email at show at twogeeksmike.com. Um, that's our email. And you can um, hit us up there with any comments or suggestions or anything like that. So, all right. Well, Mike, it's all you now. And if you've made it this far, please whoops, make sure and go and like and subscribe. Go like us on Facebook and follow us over there. I put I try to put up a lot of fun memes and any information of upcoming episodes, so on and so forth over there. Also, give the uh, bell a little tickle over on YouTube tube, and make sure and subscribe over on there. And like the videos on YouTube because when you like those, it helps the algorithm. YouTube likes that and it helps up steam too. Yeah. Yeah. Our last episode, Megan and I uh, did the Willy, Willy Wonka episode and it, it got quite a few hits. So um, yeah. And the more people who, who like it, it'll be visible to more people who may like that uh, type of thing. So please go and do that. Um, and with that said, I don't think I have anything else to you, Steven. Nope. I'm good. That was fun. Okay. That was a lot of fun. So make sure and check out our Kofi page to get the ending of the story. And until then, may the force be with you always. Thank you for joining us today on the Two Geeks and a Microphone podcast. Tune in next week when we will have more news and reviews. Until then, 